This is Seven National News and in our top story, under the directors of the UA President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UA Armed Forces, has instructed that urgent humanitarian assistance is to be delivered to the people of Nepal today. Estimates show that over 2,000 people and counting have been killed by the devastating quake, measuring 6.7 in magnitude, centred 60 kilometres east of Nepal's capital, Kathmandu. 17 people have also been killed on Mount Everest, the mountain's worst ever disaster. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the ruler's representative in the Western region, who's also the chairman of the Emirates Red Crescent Authority, also directed the UA's key relief agency to deliver urgent humanitarian assistance to the population affected by the earthquake. A group of ERC aid workers, along with the Ministry of Interior's search and rescue team, flew to Nepal today to participate in the international SAR operations. Another ERC delegation will travel to the Indian capital of New Delhi to purchase food and medical supplies and then airlift them as quickly as possible to the quake-affected areas over in Nepal. Lieutenant Colonel Mohammed Abdul Jalil Al Ansari, the leader of the MOI's SAR team and director of the Abu Dhabi Civil Defence, said that a highly professional team of 88 officers, rescuers, along with rescue equipment, to be joined by a team of experts of the United Nations Disaster Assessment and Coordination Team, will participate in the SAR operations and also provide international assistance. Dubai Customs have foiled an attempt to smuggle 9.2 kilograms of heroin through Terminal 3 at the Dubai International Airport, believed to be worth 4.5 million dirhams. The illegal drugs were found in a secret pocket of an Asian passenger's bag. Ahmed Abdullah bin Lahej, the Director of Passenger Operations at the Dubai Customs, was quoted as saying that they were tipped off about the smuggling attempt and the X-ray screening of the luggage revealed the presence of an abnormal weight at the bottom of the bag. He added that through an on-the-spot test of a sample of the drugs, using the al Kashif high-end mobile laboratory facility, the substance was found to be heroin. The Asian passenger was arrested a month ago in the transit hall of the Dubai airports by the Dubai police as he attempted to go to an African country. Newly released figures from the Ministry of Interior show that there were 147 road deaths in the first quarter of the year. That's compared with 186 in the same period last year. That's a fall of 21%, with sudden swerving as the leading factor responsible for a little over 19.8% of total deaths. Other causes of road accidents included the misjudgment of drivers, accounting for 12.6% of accidents. Failure to observe a safe distance between vehicles stood at 12.2%, not paying attention with around 10.1%. Failing to comply with lane rules, 7.9%, speeding at 6.7%, entering a road without making sure that it was clear at 6.5%, jumping a red light at 4.3%, and not giving priority to pedestrians at 3.2%. Traffic-related injuries reached 1,684 in the first quarter of 2015. That's compared with 1,976 in the same period last year, a fall of 14.8%. While the number of traffic accidents fell by 8.1% to 1,232, compared with 1,340 in the same period last year. The Roads and Transport Authority is set to invest in school transport through operating world-class buses, offering transit services to students of private schools, starting from the next academic year, 2015-2016. The service debut will be run by 50 buses, and the fleet will grow to 650 by 2024. His Excellency Matt Altair, the Chairman of the Board and Executive Director of the RTA, issued an administrative order establishing the school transport department affiliated to Dubai Taxi Corporation. 
Tasks of the new department include mapping out annual operation plans, drafting future programmes for school transport activities, contracting with schools in providing students transit services, and operating a bus fleet at the highest quality of standards using cutting-edge technologies. Altaya stated that the RTA aims at providing safe and smooth transport for all students of different ages. And it will also support the UA Education Strategy 2020 to raise the bar for school transport and also strike a balance between supply and demand. He added that figures show that the total number of students in Dubai is in the tune of 253,000, where 151,000, or 60%, use school buses. And the RTA is looking to raise this proportion to 70%. The school transport department at the Dubai Taxi Corporation will be subjected to the same standards, conditions and controls applied to entities operating school transport services. The RTA will also provide training for school bus drivers and supervisors. Demand for aesthetic procedures and reconstructive surgeries in Dubai is on the rise, with more than 10,000 new medical tourists registered with the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery Hospital, which has led to calls for more responsibility from physicians when handling such cases. Dubai Healthcare City conducted a roundtable panel discussion with renowned medical professionals today, where panellists outlined emerging trends and regulatory concerns among their patients. As a result of more patients seeking surgeries, panellists highlighted that it is more about managing expectations and ensuring that their clients are medically and mentally healthy and are aware of the time frame required for the medical procedures. According to obesity surgeon Dr. Gabby Waz, around 3,600 patients underwent weight loss surgery in Dubai over the last three years, with 90% or more of such patients qualifying for more procedures surrounding body contouring. Panelists highlighted that it is essential that physicians clearly inform their patients of the procedure, as psych psychologically itself it can be a disease. We need to talk to the patient. What we are missing here today that we do write the regulations, we do inform the physicians about the about the current coming new regulations. But the, the issue is not only the doctor himself. We need to talk to the patients more frequently. We need to reach them. We need to know their uh, insight about us. That's why we recently we have uh, initiated uh, uh, from New York City is the survey forms from the patients. What do you think their our image on them? So what do you think about the regulations? Have been given this insight and so on. With 28% of new patients registered with the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery identified as medical tourists, the executive chairperson stated that the reputation of the Emirate is often on the line. Liposuction was the most favoured cosmetic surgery procedure for medical tourists at 59%, while Botox was the top non-invasive aesthetic procedure. It was added that physicians and medical establishments have a greater role to encourage the growth of medical tourism and protecting their clients from requiring multiple surgeries. Doctors' relationship to the patient is very important. Telling the patients the truth, telling the patients that you should not do these procedures and telling the patients that your expectation is not correct because we cannot reach this, this is very important. A lot of promises is not good to the patients. So doctors, patients' relationship should be very honest and we have to tell the patients everything. Some patients, they have very high expectation and we have to manage those patients. Doctors have to manage this, those patients. In our field, if you lose one patient, you're gonna lose 100 patients after that. And it's a repetition. It's not only a repetition of the hospital itself or the doctor itself is the doctor, the hospital, Dubai Healthcare City, then the country. The El Noor Training Centre for Children with Special Needs, in collaboration with Pacific Ventures Real Estate, has announced their annual gala dinner for the 5th of June at the Madinat Jumeirah. Under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nahyan bin Mubarak Al Nahyan, the Minister of Culture, Youth and Community Development. The Al Noor Training Centre for Children with Special Needs was established back in 1981 with the purpose of providing the best care 
for children and young adults with special needs. It successfully facilitates and enriches the lives of up to 300 children and young people from different nationalities that have various physical and cognitive challenges such as Down syndrome, cerebral palsy and autism. Alnor's mission is to provide these individuals with the same opportunity through professional training and care. The centre hosts many fundraising events throughout the year to help raise money for the school whilst also having a great time. According to their representatives, the gala dinner is an opportunity to meet other supporters, but also, just as importantly, to enjoy an evening of fine food and entertainment, including a live auction that will feature exquisite items and collectible memorabilia from renowned international celebrities. Al Alnur Training Centre, as the name suggests, is a centre for children with special needs. It was established to fulfil a real need, and that is to train children in the uh, sp children with special needs in the best way that they learn. Uh, so our training program is a holistic one. It encompasses all areas of training. So we have, uh, besides the academic work that we do with them, we ensure that all their other developmental goals are also uh, fulfilled, uh, whether they are physical, social, behavioral, fine motor skills, um, uh, sensorial, you know, basically uh, completely holistically. Uh, um, holistic uh, approach we have towards um, our training program. We train them to the extent that they are able to independently integrate within the community and we also have um, a work placement program. So the young people who have the ability are actually trained to be out in open employment and currently we have about 25 young people outside working in the community in various different jobs based on their abilities and interest and these young people when they come back to us it is really validates all the work that we do on an annual basis we do many projects and events um, that have multiple kind of um, objectives the gala dinner is one of them uh, obviously, it is an event where we uh, hope to raise funds uh, because this is, uh, you know, very important in view of the fact that our program is heavily subsidized. So though we do charge fees, the fees are subsidized at 40% for every child at the center, which means that this is our need on an ongoing basis year after year. Uh, so the gala dinner is, uh, is a grand affair. It is also an opportunity for people within the community to come to network and uh, to, you know, um, uh, it is a way for them to show their support for all the sponsors to the center. When I was a student before, I was all in the different uh, classes, like from the senior, uh, senior girls to senior boys, to the juniors. Plus, I moved to the work placement, and they got me the, uh, the job in the Dubai Chamber of Commerce for six months. Then they took me out from there, and they know that Chantal can do sales, uh, sales and the marketing. And also, we have coffee mornings here in the shop, like from Sunday to Thursdays until 10 to 12. So I'm doing very good here. The center, it's, uh, the center is my second home. All my friends are here. All of my colleagues are here. And finally, looking to other news now, a baby shop and the Walt Disney Company, Mina, announced the winner of the Design a Dress competition today. And it was nine-year-old Fajera resident, Anant Kaur, who was chosen among a list of 800 submissions and was presented with a real-life version of the princess dress featuring a burst of pinks, purples and greens. Following the announcement of the winner at a grand ceremony, the eminent Emirati designer Sheikha Madia Al Sharki unveiled the real life version of the winning dress that she had created based on the design. The general manager of Baby Shop, UAE, Ruban Shanmagara Shja, said that the objective behind organizing this competition is to tap into the young creative talent pool that exists within the GCC region. Commenting on the selection process, the CEO of Dubai Design and Fashion Council, Nez Gabriel, 
said that the competition had invited the five and 12 year old girls to design a dream princess dress for themselves and also their favorite Disney princess doll. And all of the entries were evaluated for their creativity, use of color and originality. She said that the responses have inspired them to host similar competitions in the future. With the launch of our Cinderella range that was coming out, so we sat and thought about what is it that we could do to really bring the magic of Disney and Princess to, 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 our, to our children in, in the GCC. So together we came up with an idea where, you know, we will give um, kids right across GCC an opportunity to showcase the creativity and, and this is one of the things we wanted to achieve you know develop the creativity give them an opportunity give them a platform to bring that forward and wouldn't it be great to bring the magic of Disney and Babe Shop to alive and then actually recreating that dress so it was it was a conversation that started off and and, and that today is the culmination of an event we've had fantastic uh, responses right across GCC uh, entries from UAE KSA Qatar Bahrain Kuwait and beyond uh, we had 800 entries uh, and and um, the judges had a tough time but we there had to be one winner and, and today uh, we're very very proud to uh, announce the winner of the competition well we saw in in Anand sketch uh, imagination, creativity, uh, but at the same time it was, uh, it was very wearable. Uh, it, it was a fantasy that, that, was, uh, that could be achieved, obviously with the help of someone like Madia Al-Sharki uh, and her interpretation uh, to make her sketch come to life. Uh, but we saw in Anand's sketch true creativity, you know. And I think it's very promising, uh, and, and I, we really encourage her to, to you know, perhaps pursue this this interest. First, my, when my mom was, uh, told me the news that this competition is going on, then I was excited. I first practice on, on two papers, draw, draw, draw. Okay, then, then I finally got the idea, and then I got I made the stress. I I did not like it. I love it. It's. It's kind of a beautiful dress. I feel I'm a princess here now.